Welcome back! It's part two of the electroforming tutorial series where I'm going to teach you how to make your own DIY electroforming solution. Now, if you have not watched part one, which is your initial setup of an electroforming station, you can click the link above here to watch it. Otherwise, let's continue on to our video. So today we're going to brew our own solution. Now, electroforming solution is something that you can buy pre-made. You don't have to make your own. Initially, when I had started electroforming, I bought a single bottle off Rio Grande and it worked fantastic. As I kind of got a bigger tank and needed more solution. I decided I did not want to keep buying more bottles, so I learned how to make my own solution. Uh, this resulted in several weeks of research until I kind of had found a recipe that I wanted to follow, tweaked it a little bit, and I now have a recipe that I use. I've been using this recipe for several years. While I know there's a variety of different recipes out there, um, different combinations, maybe different measurements of the chemicals, this is just what I use, what has worked for me, and hopefully will work for you as well. Now there are two possibilities when you're making your electroforming solution. You can go the super homemade route, which is using household chemicals and things like that. And then there is the, what I call the pure chemical route. So the pure chemical route is using reagents, which you can source most of these on Amazon, or you can source them from different like scientific stores. Personally, I prefer the pure chemical method because it is easier to know what's in my solution. When it comes to troubleshooting, I know that there's no impurities or anything. So that is why I've stuck with that. And that's what I'm gonna be showing you today. If you're curious about the homemade route, you can go on YouTube and Reddit and find different sources in different information there. I don't know enough about that, that route, so I'm not going to really recommend any sources today. First, before we start going over the recipe and everything, the most important thing is PPE. So in this video, please do not do anything that I am doing here without wearing proper PPE. You are working with acids. You're working with some slightly dangerous chemicals that you don't want to be getting on your skin, in your eyes, anywhere in your mouth, none of that. You don't want to be breathing in these fumes either. This is not the most dangerous kind of lab work. This is what would be considered, you know, simple lab work at a college class or anything like that. But you definitely want to make sure you're being safe with it. Make sure you have a good set of chemical resistant gloves. Respirator. Yeah, these are P100 filters. They are meant to protect you from different vapors. They'll protect you from organic vapors as well. This works really well. They are from 3M. And get a set of safety glasses just so nothing splashes in your eyes. And just in case, I do tend to keep kind of a roll of shop towels just in case something spills. You know, I can kind of instantly throw it on top to uh, contain the spill. Um, yes, I have accidentally spilled a droplet of sulfuric acid, which will eat straight through everything. And another good thing to kind of keep on hand in case of any spills is some baking soda, which is a great neutralizer if something, you know, happens to spill and goes wrong. That way it's just kind of easy to neutralize it, mop it up, and you can kind of put it in your hazardous waste, waste disposal. Now, we're going to go over our ingredient list. So there is not a lot of ingredients in electroforming solution. What you're going to need is pretty simple. You will need copper sulfate pentahydrate, 98% sulfuric acid, sodium chloride, and distilled water for demineralized water for our international friends. And brightener. Some other things you will need will be a scale, uh, potentially a syringe or pipette, depending on how you're adding things to your solution, glass stirring rod, uh, HPDE, one liter bottles. So make sure you have the correct type of plastic. I go a little bit more in depth into the different types of plastic that are okay for electroforming solution in my first video. Funnel and a thousand milliliter beaker. So the recipe I use is specifically for a thousand milliliters. If you need a lot less solution for some reason, you'll kind of have to adjust the math on your own there. Math is not my strongest suit, so I'm not doing it for you. The recipe itself is pretty simple. You're gonna need 200 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate, 150 milligrams of sodium chloride, 40 milliliters of the 98% sulfuric acid, and then distill the water until it reaches a thousand milliliter line in your beaker. And just a few drops of the brightener. Now, how do you actually mix it properly? So first you wanna get your thousand milliliter beaker and pour a little bit of distilled water in it. This will prevent a cloud of dust when you add your next ingredient. So measure out your 200 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate, Then you add your 150 milligrams of sodium chloride. Add 
add distilled water to the thousand milliliter line of your beaker. And if it's really cold in your area, you might want to warm up your distilled water. Otherwise, it might take the copper sulfate a little while to dissolve. Now, take your glass stirring rod and stir until it's all completely dissolved. And the alternative is using a hot plate with a magnetic stirrer if you have that. But if you're not that fancy, this method works just fine. Once everything has dissolved, then you can take either a pipette, a beaker, or a syringe and get your 40 milliliters of sulfuric acid and add it to your solution. Always add your acid to the water, never the reverse. I've seen that warning a million times. I will heat it. I don't know what the negative outcome is, but I decided I'm not gonna test it. Now, if you're going the homemade route, what I do know is that a lot of people use battery acid as their sulfuric acid. Now, battery acid is not 98% sulfuric acid. A common percentage I see online is that it is 37% sulfuric acid, which means that you may need to add 130 milliliters of acid to your solution instead of the 40 milliliters. So just something to keep in mind, if you are using the homemade route, you may have to adjust some of your measurements based on the purity of the compound that you're trying to add. If you're using pure chemicals, that makes it real easy. Stick to the 40 milliliters, that's exactly what you need. And then I add about five drops of brightener, give it a light stir, and let it go. And that's it. Oh, making your own solution is pretty easy. It just requires some extra care in mixing chemicals and having proper PPE. Now, if you are hesitant to use the chemicals, please don't go this route and just buy your solution if you don't want to invest in all the gear and anything else. Just buy your solution off Rio Grande. They do make a really good one. Now, once you have your solution made, you can either pour it directly into your electroforming container that you're using or pour it into an HPTE bottle so you can store it and use it a little later. Today, I'm just gonna be pouring it into the bottle for now as I will not be setting up the full container and everything until the next part of the electroforming tutorial. So in the last video, remember when I discussed the plastics and the different types that you can use, you wanna make sure that you're using an HPDE or a polypropylene. That is the best way to store this stuff. You can also store it in glass, but considering if you're using long-term storage, it seems that the plastic works the best. That's how I've stored all of mine and mostly because that's how these companies ship out their solutions. Probably more cost-effective than glass, but it seems like it stores very safely that way. Now, when you're putting it, putting your solution into, into the bottle for storage, I will actually, even if it's a freshly made solution, will use a funnel with a filter paper. And I just use a coffee filter as my filter. It's the easiest thing and they're cheap. But I use that just to make sure if there has been any impurities or dust floating around that got into it, that all gets filtered out. And then that coffee filter paper just goes into the hazardous waste disposal. So just a couple little quick tips and uh, things to mention here. So the very first time I made the solution, I could not get a hold of hydrochloric acid. If you do look up a lot of different recipes right now online, do actually call for hydrochloric acid. It's only 0.05 milliliters. So it's like a droplet little tiny droplet. The recipe that I discovered online at the very beginning called for either 150 milligrams of sodium chloride or 0.05 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. I went the sodium chloride route. It has worked for me very, very well for several years. That's not to say that this will work for you perfectly. So if for some reason your solution is not working the way you intended it to, you think it's not, act it's not acting correctly, you can always substitute it. Try the hydrochloric acid, 0.05 milliliters, instead of the sodium chloride. I think what I'm gonna do is eventually make a test batch with the hydrochloric acid and probably do like two little tiny beakers side by side to see what works better to kind of put that question to the test because I don't know what works better. I have been doing what I've been doing for the last several years just because it has worked so well. I've had no issues with electroforming. I get pretty nice, clean, shiny plates for the most part. Sometimes they turn a little pinkish, which means my brightener is a little low, but overall it's worked. So since I'm doing a full blown tutorial, I don't want to change anything and just kind of show you what I have been doing and what's been working for several years. But I'm gonna experiment a little bit guys and we'll see, I think down the road, I'll make a video eventually comparing the two side by side. So I've been using the Rio Grande Minus Brightener. If you can't get a hold of that for some reason, there's a couple different international companies that make brighteners. But if regardless, if you can't get a hold of any of them, a common substitute is Miralax. Miralax has the active ingredient called PEG, 
polyethylene glycol. Now this PEG is what acts as a wetting agent that helps produce a smoother, brighter surface while electroforming. So if you are using Miralax as a substitute, just make sure it's unflavored and has a no extra like additives and stuff like that. No combinations with other over-the-counter things. And it should work theoretically pretty well. Online, it does seem to work very well for a lot of people. It's a common Reddit substitution. So I see no reason why you shouldn't be able to substitute that for brightener. Now with any brightener, you will need to replenish it over time. It will get used up. So you will notice your coats become less and less bright copper and come out to be more uh, salmon-y pink color. So basically for me, I find that every few collections, I have to replenish my brightener. No big deal. All I do is add a couple little droplets right into my tank, give it a little stir with a glass stirring rod, and that is all it, all that I need to do with it. You also do want to make sure that you do not add too much brightener, otherwise that can do some funky things to your plating. So be careful of that as well. So if you keep adding brightener because you think that's what's low, when you're troubleshooting, just make sure you're not adding too much, keep track of what you're doing. Now this Midas brightener that I have, this really is not it's not super expensive or anything and this bottle i have had since i started and it is still pretty filled one bottle will last you for a very long time and realistically even if i don't get quite the desired brightness that i want with my jewelry when it comes out of the bath it's a very easy process for me to just put a brass bristle disc on a rotary tool and shiny it right up so Regardless, it's not the biggest fall in the world if your brightener isn't working too well. You can shine it up pretty quick. So the next step will be making and prepping something for the electroforming bath. That's gonna be the next video. If you need graphite paint for the next step, then go watch this video because I have made a little tutorial on how I make my graphite paint. It's real simple and only two ingredients. Now just remember that electroforming it's not a 100% exact science. There is a lot of variables that can affect if it's working well for you or not. This can be everything from the climate you're in, the altitude you're at, your ambient room temperature, humidity in your room, and a couple other factors. What works for me may not work perfectly for you, but I am sharing this knowledge in the hope that if you are learning and getting stuck somewhere that this can kind of provide a guideline for what you should continue to do and hopefully some ideas to help you get unstuck. So as always, Drop any comments down below if you want to see any future videos, have questions, or want me to talk about specific topics. I'm currently making a list of all the topics that you guys are giving me, and I'm trying to make each of them into a video. And don't forget, I am dropping any supplies or anything that I recommend is down in my uh, description. They are all affiliate links for me, and they do help kind of fund this channel, as well as if you click that like button, hit the subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next step.